Welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast, where science and spirit are the focus of creating your most fertile life. You'll find a beautiful balance of grounded science-based topics as well as spiritual talk and how they are both important for moving toward optimal fertility. Empower yourself along with me. I'm your host, Dr. Maria Rothenberger, a fellow fertility friend, therapist, coach, best-selling author, and spirit baby intuitive. Let's get started. Hey, welcome to the Miracles Happen Fertility Podcast. This is Dr. Maria Rothenberger. It is January 2023. I have not published a podcast in several weeks because all of December, I was ill. (laughs) I contracted COVID at the end of November, did not know, and I dealt with that for many weeks, and then... I got the flu. So not only was I, my body still recovering, but I got hit with the flu. And so I was down for the count. Definitely wasn't thinking about recording a podcast. (laughs) So I'm so happy to be well enough here today to be able to invite you into a beautiful 2023 and a wonderful release of 2022. 2022 was an interesting year. There were some ups and and some downs in my life. And I suppose that's everyone's life, isn't it? (laughs) So releasing 2022, inviting in 2023. Every year I meditate on a theme. I don't love... um, what's the word? Resolutions. See, I don't even know the word. I don't love New Year's resolutions. I I like to choose a theme for the year for myself. Last year, it was Simplify Life. And I just sent out a newsletter about that. If you're not on my newsletter, head over to drmariarothenberger.com. You can sign up right there just underneath that first photo. You can see a sign up link there. Or you can scroll down a little bit more and get a few gifts, free things that I have up there, and that'll automatically put you on the newsletter. Of course, unsubscribe at any time. Uh, Anyway, so I wrote about that in my newsletter, and I said, I give myself a solid B (laughs) for simplifying life. I still have a tendency to do too much because I get very excited and interested and fascinated by new and wonderful ideas. Uh, And so I fail to throw those ideas into my brain dump in my bullet journal and instead I go full force and so I end up getting distracted and unfocused on the thing that I wanted to do. But last year was much better on that front. This year, my theme is follow my intuition. Now, if you've listened to this podcast long enough, you know I'm a big proponent of one's intuition. I am very aware and trust my intuition. I've gotten to that point. But now it's to actually do the things to follow it. So for example, let's just take nutrition. If I have some potato chips in my one hand and I have um, some, oh, I don't know, an avocado. That's my favorite food on the planet. An avocado in my other hand and I ask my body, what do you need right now? And my body goes, oh, totally the avocado. But my brain is like, oh, but I really want those chips. Sometimes I'll just eat the chips. (laughs) And I think that's fine, right? Sometimes that's just fine. But for my personal experience, I have been trusting my intuition, knowing that it's probably telling me the truth, and then sometimes not following it in the way that I needed to. And I've learned many, 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 many times over the last year, especially, but certainly before that, that when I don't actually do the things to follow my intuition, it doesn't turn out well, or sometimes it'll turn out eh, okay, but it certainly could have been better had I followed my intuition. So my goal, this, or not my goal, but my theme for the year is to follow my intuition. So far, I have been doing that. Um, and speaking of nutrition, I hired a nutritionist because my immune system is crap over the last many years. It's not been that great when I was dealing with infertility. Ironically, my into my, uh, immune system was stellar. It was amazing. I never got sick, but now, ugh, 
It's no good. So following my intuition, I hired a nutritionist and we'll see where that goes. I would love to know what your theme is or your word is for 2023. What have what intentions have you set for yourself this year? I also do a personal tarot reading. This this reading, the reading this year was astounding. It was just so great. Actually, let me go through it real quick. My intuition is saying to tell you what I did. <laughs> so I'm going to do that. And then we're going to get to the topic that is not related to anything spiritual. It is very practical. How to fire your therapist. Yeah, really important to know how to do. All right. So here's what the spread was. In previous years, I've always just pulled a card for each month, but I felt, I don't know, it was a little lackluster. It was a little lackluster. So here's what I did for this year. I pulled seven cards and I put them on a spread. Um, if you think of like a wheel, I put them in a wheel formation. It's it's hard to describe verbally, but that's just how I did it. And then the final card, seven, was in the middle. Okay, here's what they mean. Number one, the sunset. Letting go. What are the things that I needed to let go of from 2022? Number two, the second card. Horizon. What can I expect in 2023? Number three, obstacle. What are the main challenges this year? Number four, strength. What strengths do I need to call upon or harness in order to address the challenge? Five, advice. What are the lessons that I learned from 2022 that I need to implement this year? Six, navigation overall guidance for 2023 and then seven is personal theme what is the overarching message for 2023 and it was really stunning the uh the spread or the cards that i pulled for those particular spots um if you don't know how to read tarot or oracle cards join the miracles happen fertility center excuse me, join the Miracles Happen community at miracleshappencommunity.com. And I will be doing a class on that in the coming year. Very basic information on how to do it. But there's all kinds of information and fun stuff and connection in the Miracles Happen community anyway. So just go join. It's free. Like what else is free in the fertility world, right? Speaking of which, that is the sponsor for this week's podcast episode. Uh, have a listen and I'll catch you on the other side. Sometimes it's hard to find the like-minded people you want to connect with on life's journey. People who are not only interested in fertility, but also spiritually minded and curious about spiritual connections to life experiences. I'm Dr. Maria Rothenberger, and I created the Miracles Happen community for just this purpose. Come join us in Mind, Body, and Soul Speak for your most fertile life. Best of all, it's completely off social media and 100% free. Find us and sign up at www.miraclesappencommunity.com. Someone request, requested to join the Miracles Happen community the other day, and there's a brief question that you answer when you go to join, and her answer was around having a gentle, supportive environment on the fertility journey and certainly in the spiritual fertility community. And that is exactly who we are. So if that is of interest to you, come join us. We would be delighted to connect with you. Okay, so one other announcement and then we'll get into the topic of today. Spirit Baby Foundations training is starting this month. I am so glad that I actually followed my intuition last November when I decided to postpone Spirit Baby Foundations training because I was sick for all of December. So it is going to be starting again this month on January 27th, 2023. You, if you um, are on my newsletter, you will already get information about it, but you can also go over to drmariarothenberger.com slash spiritbabytraining to get more information and to sign up for the waitlist. 
and I will automatically send you emails about all of those details and what else you'll be learning, all the details about the training. Um, and we have alumni that join us too. You have lifetime access to Spirit Baby Foundation's training. Once you pay for it, you have it. You can join all the live um, uh, iterations of it as you wish, as long as you long, as long as I'm doing it, <laughs> you're welcome to join. And so you'll be talking to or connecting with alumni too, who have already done the course. Uh, and so, oh gosh, it's just such a good time. I could go on and on about it forever, but I won't. I will move on to the topic of today. But hey, consider joining Spirit Baby Foundation's training if you are um, one who is an empath, if you've been told that you have a gift or you've been told that um, you may be able to connect to the other side or if you just know it and you want to focus on Spirit Baby work, um, this course may be for you. So go check it out. Okay, let's get into today's topic, which is, again, not not a spiritual topic. It's very practical. And this is how I've moved through my world. I like to marry the two, have quite a bit of balance between being a human <laughs> and being a spiritual being, having a human, a human experience, right? Like it, there is a balance to be had here. Today, we're going to be talking about something very practical, and that is how to fire your therapist. This is a sensitive topic, right? And when I say fire your therapist, that's a little strong. <laughs> Maybe I mean how to end with your therapist in a respectful, um, kind, compassionate manner. Maybe that's what I mean, right? But the title is prov- is thought-provoking, isn't it? So this is what I'd like to say about this. Now, I I should address, I'm not going to be talking about reasons to fire your therapist. I think that it's first really important to know internally whether or not this person is a good match for you therapeutically. Because there are plenty of excellent therapists, really great therapists who just don't resonate with you or resonate with a client, a particular client. That's happened to me plenty of times. And so um, as a therapist, so if, if somebody likes me, they think I'm a nice person or that I'm potentially a good therapist, but I'm just not for them. That is perfectly fine. I actually had somebody who, um, did not consider me a match for her, even though there was a fertility specialty thing going on. There was, this was related to fertility and loss, but I was not a match for her therapeutically. And that is perfectly fine. (laughs) That is so fine. Okay. But there is a wonderful way to be able to end a therapeutic relationship. And so I want to be able to address that. And there, well, I shouldn't say that there's a singular way. There are many ways to do it. Um, I can tell you that you can simply ghost your therapist. You can. Is it the healthiest way? No, it's not. You already know the answer to that, right? No, it's not the healthiest way. It's not the most direct way. It's not using your voice to state your opinion, to state your needs, which I believe is extremely therapeutic and wonderful, especially when you feel safe enough to do so. Now, that is one of the caveats here, right? If you do not feel like your therapeutic your therapeutic relationship is safe, then simply ghost your therapist. That's completely fine because you certainly want to feel safe. Now, here are ways to fire your therapist. I will tell you that when I was in therapy for fertility issues, I did this both incorrectly and in a healthy way. So learn from my mistakes (laughs) and also potentially um, harness the ways that I did this in a healthy way so that you can do it yourself. Okay, so the first thing that I realized when I was in therapy, I've, I tried three different therapists when I was dealing with um, fertility issues, uh, just individual therapy, and then we had a couples therapist. We, we tried a couple, two couples therapists. Okay, so here are a couple of examples <laughs> of my personal therapy experiences. And I'm laughing because I wrote about one in Transcending Infertility that was so fucked up and crazy that 
<laughs> like, dude, how could we not fire you, dude? This, this is nuts. And I'll tell you that story. That was a couples therapist. Okay. So, but let me just talk about the individual therapists. I had a particular issue. I had fertility issues and I wanted to be able to talk about this with somebody who at least could understand this intelligently and not trigger me. And the very first therapist that I went to was a delightful person. He was great. He was wonderful. He was fine. Um, the one thing that I really didn't like um, from the from the get-go was he knew I was a therapist, of course, because we ask folks career um, as part of an assessment. And he knew I was a therapist. And every time I walked in the door, he called me counselor instead of, hi, Maria, how are you doing? Or hi, Maria, I'm glad to see you today. Or welcome in, Maria. He would say, hey, counselor, how's it going? And that already made me feel as if I had to have some kind of expertise in this scenario. Now, you might not be a therapist, so this might not matter as much to you. But imagine if you're a teacher and you walked into your therapist's office and they said, hi, hey, instructor, or hey, you know, professor, or hey, teacher. It just, it it creates a little bit more distance than should happen, in my opinion, in a therapy um, realm. You want to be able to be out of your work mode, out of your expertise mode, out of your I have all the answers mode, <laughs> and be in um, a safe environment that offers you an ability to be vulnerable while also looking at your own struggles and being able to move your way out of them with guidance. Um, <clears throat> so that's the general theme. I, I really do not like that. Now, this therapist I totally ghosted. I just left. I was like, okay, I'm not going back there anymore. I never made an appointment. I never told him why. Um, and as a therapist myself, I actually value that information. If somebody says to me, I don't think this is a good fit. Here's why. I'm not going to be sitting there saying, well, I, I can be all the things that you need me to be. I, you know, we can do those things. Um, I'm not going to attempt to force somebody to stay. Now, I will say it is a useful conversation to have when a when a client says, or if you say, I don't think this therapy is working for me. Here's why. And then you have a conversation within the therapeutic realm and discuss why it's not helpful. There are myriad reasons, right? It could be that um, the therapist doesn't have a style that fits you. Maybe you need more practical advice or practical things that you can do outside of the therapy office. Maybe you actually need someone who only listens to you and doesn't give you practical advice. I've had clients that say, I really just need to vent. I really just need to vent in a safe place where I'm not going to be judged. And other people are like, no, give me the all the, all the homework. I want the homework. Give me the things to do. <laughs> Everybody is different. The, the thing is for you to be able to voice what you need in therapy is so therapeutic in and of itself. <laughs> to feel safe enough to do that is amazing. And if you don't feel safe enough to do that, that's also a conversation to have with your therapist. So I recommend not ghosting, but if you don't feel safe in your therapist's office, it's, it's fine. It's fine to do that because you do need to feel safe. Now, hindsight, I would have potentially said to this gentleman, um, it makes me uncomfortable when you call me counselor because I feel like I have to be the expert and I just don't want to be the expert here in your office. I want you to be the expert and I want to be able to tell you all the crap and the darkness that's going on in my life. And then you give me your advice or your insights or you connect that to my you know, childhood or whatever it is that you do to help me have a greater understanding to move through this. Um, I would have wanted to have that conversation. The thing though, that was the first thing that, that I didn't like. The thing though, that really said, that's it. He's not the right fit is that he said to me that he just looks at his wife and she gets pregnant. And if you struggle with conceiving, you know, that's a massive trigger and he just didn't get it. 
He just didn't get it. Not his fault at all. He just didn't get it. This is, by the way, when I resolved to be a therapist that focuses on fertility issues because I do get it. (laughs) I do. Now, I will say the second therapist that I hired in her Psychology Today profile indicated that fertility was, or infertility, was one of her specialties. It was not. She asked me what IVF meant. It was not a specialty. So I don't know why she had it in her profile as one of her specialties. Um, And I, I actually never called her on it because we ended up talking about other ways that I could use therapy with her. I really liked her. Um, As a therapist, I think that she was a perfect combination of friendly and compassionate. um, And she gave a little bit of of her personal experiences that related to my experiences to help illustrate a therapeutic point. It was it was beautiful. She was really um, she crafted her therapy well. So this is a kind of person that I felt very safe saying, uh, that's triggering or, uh, I don't want to be the expert here. Can you offer your expertise? And then we would have a conversation around that and thereby hone the therapy itself. So I was able to explain to her what IVF meant, all of the things that come with IVF. It's not just about the medical thing, right? There's a ton of emotional crap and baggage that comes with that. So I was able to describe that to her without feeling triggered and upset that she didn't know um, for the first time, because I had explained this to so many people in my life. But as a therapist, I was paying her to understand this and get it. So I was able to um, engage in that therapy well, even though she wasn't a special, a, a, a true specialist in fertility issues. Now, <clears throat> it ended up that I actually wanted more um, therapy around how to handle being a therapist while dealing with infertility. So that was really useful in that therapy, uh, in that therapeutic alliance. Um, now, there was another therapist that I hired that absolutely had a, um, a specialty. Oh, I didn't talk about ending therapy with that other one. So the other one I ended um, very, we had a very open conversation about it. I said to her, you know, I think I actually feel good about where this has gone. And I think I'm ready to to end for now. But are you open to allowing me to come back if I need? So that's how I had this conversation with her. Now, as a therapist, I'm actually constantly assessing folks and their symptoms. And I will note to them directly without them saying anything. Hey, I noticed that this and this and this is better. What do you think? Or how do you feel? And if that feels or accurate or right to them, then I will broach the topic of potentially titrating down therapy or ending or shortening sessions to only 30 minutes and kind of getting a feel. What do you think? Ultimately, this is about you, not your therapist. It's not a all about your therapist. This is all about you. So that when you come to um, a, a point in your therapy when something's not working or it's not feeling right, if you can get out of that headspace of, but I need to make sure that my therapist is okay, it's not about them at all. Not to say that a therapist isn't going to have an emotional reaction because they are human beings after all, but that is not your job (laughs) at all. It is their job to figure out their own shit. And it's your job to say what you need in a therapy session or in a therapeutic alliance. So as you're gearing up to offer um, feedback or to give or to ask for what you need in a therapy relationship, think about that how can I make this about me? Because that's what this is. This is, and it's allowed to be about me. I am paying this person or this person is being paid to help me. And so I get to ask for what I need. Please get into that headspace. And a good therapist is going to be like, oh, absolutely. This is about you. Totally. Let's talk about what you need. Um, so 
that's where I did well. <laughs> I told that therapist what I needed and uh, we, you know, she aligned with that. We processed it and we actually directed therapy in that way. It was really great. I had another therapist who um, did specialize in fertility issues. <clears throat> and this is, I was actually in a really dark place. In my book, I write about this. I was actually quite suicidal. I was um, depressed. Uh, I was emotionally charged, irritable, just in a terrible place. And I didn't know what the hell I was doing in therapy as a, as a client. I just was mortified that I was crying in a therapy session. <laughs> I know I've talked about this before. She was so skilled at therapy that she allowed me my embarrassment while also, um, oh gosh, I don't know. There was this beautiful balance of, I knew that she wasn't judging me. And I also knew that she wasn't judging my judgment of myself. She was just allowing it to be there. And then offering bits of insight and humor to help balance, but it didn't, the humor didn't um, take away from the, the importance or the heaviness of the moment. She was just incredibly skilled. And she was also so good at, she very knowledgeable about fertility issues. Um, so she had counseling um, skills, but also practical skills. And I love that balance. I like being able to um, purge whatever's inside, but also, hey, give me the homework. I like that. That's what I need in a therapy session, in a therapy alliance or relationship. And she was able to offer that. Um, we ended therapy because I, uh, she, my insurance wasn't paying as much or my insurance wasn't covering her anymore. And so I had to, um, we had to come up to, with a financial agreement. She was willing to take a lower fee for uh, based on what my insurance was paying her. So she wasn't charging me her whole fee. Um, I just paid what the insurance is paying her. But even with fertility treatments and all that, I mean, you all know, it just becomes really expensive. So, so I had to set that limit with her and um, let her know that I couldn't, I couldn't see her anymore because of the financial obligations. But I did that well too. So I, I think I sent her an email or I called her and got her voicemail and let her know. So I didn't just end therapy. I didn't just ghost. I didn't just no show. I did tell her what would have to happen. I gave her ample time. In my practice, I um, request only 24 hours notice so that I can call somebody else and, and ask them if they want that spot. Um, but certainly it can be well before your next appointment. Um, or if you haven't made an appointment and they are expecting you to, then call and say why you're not going to schedule an appointment. I think that that's um, a good human thing to do, but it's also a solid ending to a therapeutic relationship. Here's what's like, I don't know, textbook. <clears throat> textbook therapy is you're in a horrible place. Uh, you need some help. Your therapist helps you through these peaks and valleys, helps you gain some new skills, helps you practice in real life, in the real world, some skills and things to learn. Gain, you gain some insight about how you operate. You start feeling better. Symptoms are alleviated. Symptoms are alleviated. Oops, now you're feeling bad again. You come back, you learn some new skills, or you're just reiterating the skills that you've already learned. Oh yeah, this is how it's done in this particular instance. Okay, great. So there are some ups and downs peaks and valleys, but overall, overall getting better and better and better and better and better. Your therapist reassesses every few months. You um, attain new goals or create new goals for therapy if you want to. But overall, you start attaining all these goals and you start feeling like, huh, I don't need, I don't think I need therapy anymore. I think I'm able to do life without therapy. You sometimes people will start forgetting about their therapy sessions. Oh shit, that's right. I have therapy today. That's not a bad thing. That's actually an indication. Oh, maybe, maybe I don't need this anymore. And so then you have a conversation with your therapist. I think I'm actually doing okay. Can we, you know, go down to once every two weeks, once every month? 
can we end therapy? Uh, and you start processing and talking about this. Your therapist is aligned with your goals. Your goal is to end therapy. Totally. Let's work on that. Or maybe today's the last session. How do you feel about that? Um, the therapist says, or you say, can today be our last session for a bit? I just think I'm doing okay. What, I don't know. Is that possible? Is it possible if things go south that I can come back? So you're really processing and talking about this. You have a final session. Doors left open if that's what you want. Door is closed if that's what you want. It matters what you want, not what your therapist wants. And then you go on your merry way and live life with your new skills. And then you re-engage in therapy if you need to. That is textbook. They call it a termination session. That last session, I think it's a dumb word. I don't like it. <laughs> um, I don't even know what I would call it. A final session, a um, an end to therapy for now. I don't know what I would like to call it, but I, termination is just, I don't know. I think it's triggering because of the fertility world. Um, so that is textbook. Textbook rarely freaking happens. Okay, rarely it is so rare. I've had people that we never had a termination or an end session or a last, ses a last session, and I don't see them for like two, three years. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, Maria, I was wondering if I can come back to therapy. Blah, blah, blah. I know we haven't talked in a while, blah, blah, blah. And they come back to therapy and then we start again on a new thing. Um, textbook just doesn't, it's, just, it's so rare. I think I've had that happen. I've been in practice for, I don't know, 17 years now, 16 years now. And I think that's happened a handful of times, five or less, um, over the hundreds and hundreds of people that I've seen, that's how many times it's happened. So monitor your expectations, right? But I think that when you are reaching a termination, quote unquote, session, because you, that's what you want, because therapy isn't working for you, um, it's not going to be textbook, it's going to be a, a conversation to be had, I think, in a healthy way. I think it's important. So ghosting is perfectly reasonable if you don't feel safe in your therapy session. Here's the next thing. You say, I'm actually feeling, let's say you you feel like you've come to the end of therapy because you're feeling okay. You say that, I'm actually feeling great. I'm wondering what you think about if it's possible to stop therapy for now what do you like what are your thoughts about that or I don't know do you have a, a treatment plan trajectory is this included what does that even look like right so you're getting curious how this looks they are your provider right so you are asking um, your provider for sound information um, let's say though that you're not feeling like therapy is working or there's something that's not right you don't feel like they're a good fit for you. It's not working. You're stuck. You're asking for things they're not able to give you. Or there are many, many, many other reasons that are uncomfortable to talk about. Um, I still think, if you still feel safe, relatively, I think that it's really useful to bring that up. Hey, you know, a couple of sessions ago, you said something that really stuck with me and it's really made me uncomfortable. Can we talk about that? Um, hey, you know, I'm thinking that this therapy isn't really helping me. Here's why. Um, hey, I'm thinking that we need to move on to a different, or that I need to move on to a different therapist because I think I need a different style. Or I've been asking for a different type of therapy, and I know that you've tried to provide it, but I don't think it's working. So here's the overarching idea. You actually say what you're thinking and feeling to the therapist. And then you say, this will be my last session. Or maybe there isn't, this doesn't happen in the session. You call them or you leave them a voicemail. Um, whether or not they call you back is completely up to you. You can ask them to call you back or you can say, there's no need to call me back. I just wanted to let you know that I won't be scheduling any more sessions. All of those are perfectly reasonable. Please keep in mind your therapist is a human, so you don't have permission, blanket permission to be an asshole, okay? You don't have that, but you can be fervent. You can be assertive. I encourage you to do all of that. I encourage you to set clear boundaries 
say, state clearly what you need or want from them. Maybe you're giving them a call saying, I don't want to continue therapy, but I am open to a final session to process everything. Maybe that's what you need. So the first thing really is to get quiet, get into a still space and ask yourself, what do I want? I am allowed to make my therapy about me. And so what do I want in this situation? Okay, if you want to end the therapy, yay, that's your next move. Your next question is, do I feel safe enough to talk to my therapist about this? If not, ghosting is fine. I I am fine with that. As a therapist, (laughs) if somebody doesn't feel safe, ghost me. That's fine. The second thing, though, if you feel safe enough, is to actually talk to the therapist about what's going on inside of you, about what you need. If you feel pressured in any way to continue therapy when you've already decided that you don't want to continue therapy with this person, it is completely fine to get yourself up and leave that therapist's office. Or in my case, because I only do online therapy now, end the session. I would say, um, I am ending the session right now. I hope you take care. Thanks for listening to me. And that's it. No problem there. You're still not being a jerk. You're, you're just saying what you need. Okay. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to recap here. Be in stillness. Ask yourself what you need. If you feel safe, ask for a conversation with this therapist, either during a therapist session or on the phone, outside of therapy, outside of a therapist hour. If you don't feel safe, it's perfectly fine to just ghost and end on your own. That's perfectly fine. Now, if you feel safe enough and you are going to have this conversation with your therapist, manage your expectations. It's not comfortable. It's not comfortable to talk to anybody about how their work or their behavior is not suiting you well. Consider it excellent practice for real life (laughs) because you are going to run into this for the rest of your life. There are going to be people that annoy you, people that don't um, honor you. They don't honor your boundaries. They don't honor your limits. It's really great practice. And you can even say that to your therapist. Hey, this is really freaking uncomfortable for me, but I really feel like I'm safe enough to say this to you. And I I hope that you receive it this way. Now, with any like um, bad news, quote unquote, or any feedback for somebody, I do have a general idea or thought around it. You can start with something positive, put the not so good stuff in the middle, and then end with something positive. That's the, I call it the bad news sandwich or um, feedback sandwich or whatever. You sandwich the not so good stuff in between some good stuff. So you can say, hey, I appreciate our work thus far. Um, I don't think this is working for me anymore. Thank you so much for all the work that you've done. Goodbye. That's like the short version. (laughs) So that's a general theme. Start with something okay. Middles, not so good stuff. The end is starting with something or uh, ending with something good or something okay. All right. So I hope that my ramblings from today can be useful in some way for you. If you feel like you need to fire your therapist or end therapy for any reason, I hope that this is useful for you, that you can take some things from here and put it into your everyday use. I am completely open to questions, by the way, about your particular situation. Uh, If you want to email me info at drmariarothenberger.com, I will get back to you within a couple of weeks. I do answer all my emails personally. So just take me a while to get back to people sometimes. But uh, there's some managing your expectations, right? If you do outreach me, I will get back to you as soon as I can within a couple of weeks. Again, info at drmariarothenberger.com. That's burger, B-U-R-G-E-R. And I look forward to hearing from you. All right. If 
you find the content of this podcast helpful for you or you feel supported or you like it or you want to pass it on, please consider rating this podcast wherever you're listening to it from. And just a star rating is great. And I also love reading your words. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for those who have given feedback thus far. I really appreciate you. And I am wishing you continued ability to vocalize what you need to set beautiful limits and boundaries with everybody in your life, including a therapist. And until next time, my friend, may you be well. Take care.